Okay guys, so in this video we are going to talk about Bastion. So let's get into it. So basically what we're going to cover is what is a Bastion architecture and how can we set that up with Docker. Now when I'm talking about Bastion I'm not talking about the awesome computer game that you all should play but I'm actually talking about the concept of a Bastion in a computer network. So this is a bit of a learning experience for me as well. It was something that I kind of stumbled upon. I had this amazing article that I found or that I, that, uh, I, and that I read that I highly recommend that you go and have a look at this. It really opened my eyes into a new way of working with, with SSH or Secure Shell. And I think it's worth a read. You should really have a look at it. And most of like, everything that I'm doing right now is just based upon that article. I just wanted to play around with this for myself to kind of get the grasp some of these security considerations and learn a lot in the process and now I'm going to share what I learned with you guys. So let's start off with what a bastion host is. So a bastion or a bastion host is in theory just a computer on a network that has extra security. Now what that basically means is that you have a entry point into your computer network that is the only way for you to get into the remaining hosts of that network. So as, an Im as we can imagine in this scenario that I'm going to show you, I have three Docker containers that are running on a secured network. So the firewall doesn't allow, allow anything, any connection to any of the pods that are running or any of the containers apart from the bastion. The bastion is the only one that you can connect to from the outside through SSH. And the reason for that is because I want to create a situation where I have really, really strong, solid security on my bastion computer so that I don't have to be as secure on the remaining network. It's just a way for me to guarantee that no, I don't have to have as much security considerations for everything that is within the network. Because as you can imagine, if I have a lot of computers and like maybe hundreds of thousands of different instances, it's a big hassle to maintain a really high level of, level of security on every single one of those hosts. But if I focus my attention on one host and make sure that that one host is the only way that you can connect to the other environments, well, then I can basically reduce the overall cost of my security setup to one specific image or to one specific host and just focus all my attention on that. And that is basically the idea of a bastion. It's just a computer that is extremely secured and allows you to, uh, once you have validated yourself through that host, you can then proxy and connect to the other hosts. So the tool we're going to use here is the tried and true SSH or secure shell. I'm not going to walk you through exactly what SSH is and I'm not going to walk you through like what Docker is and what Docker Compose is and all this stuff. I'm kind of assuming a lot about your like your knowledge in these areas. But basically in order for us to make any sense of this, we're going to go through a few files here that I have in my repository to set all of this up. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the services docker file. And basically what this is, is just a file that is going to set up our image or our container for the services that we're going to create. And as you can see here, my building this is basically just, all right, I have this setupservices.sh. And if we have a look at the setup services, all this is going to do is that it's going to reduce down, it's going to connect to the IP tables of the image running on, the, uh, on a Ubuntu image. And it's going to restrict access on port 22 for every single one of uh, like down to just taking requests from the bastion like this is just a um, this i am not going to dive into this but basically what i'm stating here is that on port 2020 re uh, allow any uh, allow requests only from the from a host like this is going to result to the bastion's um, 
domain name or to its IP address. So on this IP address, allow connections to on port 22 and all the other ones we're going to drop. We're just not going to allow anybody else to connect to it. So that means that the services themselves, they can't talk to each other over SSH. So if you have an attacker who gets into the network, they can't actually reach outside, not at least not through SSH. They can't to connect to the other environments. They have to go through the bastion to be able to do this. So this is just one extra layer of security. We could have skipped this if, I, if we wanted to, but I wanted to go this way it, because it was cool. That's pretty much it, really. And then what we're going to do is that we're just going to run all these commands. So we're going to update our environment because we're just using a standard Ubuntu image. And then we're going to install the OpenSSH server, which is the server that is going to just allow us to SSH into that environment. And then, we, of course, we install IP tables because that doesn't come by default. And then we're going to create the SSHD directory. And then we're going to be just enable the setup services to be executable and put that in our in our bin folder so that we can execute this command. And lastly, but last but not least, we're going to add one single guest account. And basically, we're just going to create a password that is guest uh, on the user guest. And that's pretty much it. So it's a very, like, the this doesn't do anything special or, like, anything that is all that fancy. So now that we have created the the base image we'll, whenever we start this what it's going to do is that it's just going to run the script and as you can see it's just going to set up the ip tables rules and then it's going to start uh, start the sshd server that's it and then on the bastion which is our more secure secure image is we're going to do a very a very similar sort of thing we're going to just install these dependencies but we're also going to install this which i thought was a really cool thing that came from this article as well so i didn't know this but google the google authenticator app that you may know of if you're using two factor authentication it actually has a pam library that allows you to included into all the applications that you may have running on your images or your hosts that support PAM. And that's pretty cool. We're going to talk about PAM in just a moment, but this I thought was pretty cool because then we can actually add another layer of security to our bastion. And then we're just going to copy over this little script here, which is set up Google Auth. And all this is going to do is that it's going to run the Google Authenticator library or the CLI. And then it's just we're just going to set some reasonable defaults for how to actually run this validation. So once that's done, we're going to copy my configuration. This is the SSHD configuration. And all I really need to do here is that I need to enable a, a new authentication method, which is the keyboard interactive, which allows me to pretty much just have an interactive experience between myself and the host. So this is what I need to do in order to use the Google Authenticator app. And then I need to specify a trusted CI key. So the CA key, is, or the certificate authority is in this case going to be my local laptop. So I have this little, this is just a copy of my local um, SSH key. And this thing here, what I'm basically saying here is that if, if I have a client that connects to this bastion host, you can trust the, key, the certificate if it is signed by this key. So if the certificate is signed by this key, you can trust it. That's basically what I'm saying. And what's powerful about that, and what's so powerful about SSH certificates, is that they are they will allow me to set up a temporary key or sign a certificate that is timestamped in some fashion, and then basically that's going to deprecate itself once the time runs out. In opposition to how you would do this with just regular SSH keys is pretty much that as I was saying, I can actually deprecate this automatically by simply stating that, oh, this uh, this key here, well, it's going to be dead after a day or a week or something like that, which is perfect if you don't want people to have permanent access to an environment or if you don't want to deal with the hassle of changing out keys. And let's say that some of these certificates are compromised in some fashion. Well, then all I have to do is to just generate another public key and then change that one once here and then all those keys like whatever certificate i have signed or that may have been compromised is just taken care of now so 
that's the base ID at least. And then we have the host certificate, which is also important because in this setup, I'm going to use a very, like a, it's practically, oh, it's not mutual TLS, but it's in practice mutual TLS. So I have a host certificate that is going to be the thing that if my client is going to expect from the host. So I have two things going on here. I have on the host or on the bastion, the, I have specified a key stating that any certificate that the client gives you, trust that if it's signed with this key. And here I've stated that, all right, now the the bastion when the client when the SSH server responds to my rec incoming request, it's going to state that okay, present this certificate to the client. And if the client has trust, can trust this certificate, we can perform the the secure connection. Now this is a little bit different from how the uh, the normal flow works for those of you who are using SSH because usually what you do is that you just blindly, you, that's why you get this warning message you may have seen. You blindly just accept that, oh, this certificate is to be trusted. And we're trying to skip that step. We're trying to be even more secure than that. So that is pretty much it. And then I have my Docker Compose file here where I'm just gonna kind of walk through this very quickly where we are building the bastion and we're just setting the context to this and then we're building the we're using this docker file this bastion docker file exposing the ports setting the container name so that the so that the internal dns resolution is going to resolve into the actual ip address this was interesting because I, I, did, I had to do a little bit of digging. In order to run this in Docker, I actually had to specify this capacity for net admin. And I didn't know, like I, I wasn't aware of that Docker actually restricted my access to the uh, networking there, like to the firewalls. So I needed to actually add this flag in order to be able to use IP tables, which was a learning for me. And then that should be pretty much it. This is the that's this is the base setup. So if I now go over to my shell here, and let's see Docker PS. All right, nothing is running. Docker compose up and demonize that. So we're gonna start the bastion and testing and the production environment. So if I now cut out my uh, let's see here dot ssh dot config you'll see here that i have a few hosts set up so i have my bastion host which is just going to go to host name localhost because i'm running this on my local computer and i'm setting myself as the root user which you shouldn't of course do but i'm just doing this for demo purposes and then i have another host called testing which is going to do this going to go to the guest user but i'm also going to do this which is pretty interesting so i can do a proxy jump which, where i basically state that all right go to the bastion and in instance and once you have validated and connected securely to that instance, then you can jump to the actual uh, testing host name or like actually go to where you want. So I'm always proxying myself through the bastion because remember, I can't connect to testing or prod. These environments, they're locked down to me, even if I, unless I, you go through Docker, of course, but we, we're just simulating stuff here, right? So if I now go and I say SSH bastion, it's gonna say permission denied and it's gonna say keyboard interactive. And this is because I haven't set up the Google Authenticator. So I'm gonna to have to sheet a little bit here and say Docker exec bash in, the ba in bastion. So now I need to run set up Google auth like so. And this is gonna give me this awesome picture here, which is the QR code and some emergency scratch codes. And then I'm gonna have to use my phone for this because I wanna do this the right way. Now I'm not able to give you a screen share of that, but hopefully you're gonna just be bear with me while I set this up. So we're gonna scan the code and that's gonna give me in the Google Authenticator app, my secret code, which is pretty awesome. So now this is set up. So now I can do SSH bastion like so, and now it's gonna ask me for the verification code. And that's gonna be 749189, like so, and boom, I'm into the bastion instance. Now you may have noticed that it didn't actually ask me for the certificate. It didn't like ask me, oh, 
uh, are you are you able to actually trust this certificate and that is because I've already added it in so I cheated a little bit earlier here and I can show you exactly what I did dot uh, now let's do this home SSH and we're gonna know you do known hosts so here you'll see my certificates and here is github for those of you who have this set up and here is this little thing so i've created a um, a directive here where i basically state that all right this is not this is a certificate authority in other words this uh, this key that i'm getting here is actually a certificate and i'm just stating that any host that present this certificate just trust it blindly and that's pretty much it so Th this process is literally the same thing as if I'm just going to blindly accept their certificate. It's just that I have already added into added into my known hosts file. So if I now do sysh prod, it's going to ask me for the verification code because I'm proxying through the bastion. So let's say 401, 706, and now it's going to ask me for a password. Let's say guest. And there it is. That is uh, me pretty much into inside of the Bastion instance. Or rather, I have gone through the Bastion into the guest host, which I think is pretty nice. Now, I'm just going to illustrate for you that there is a level of trust here that I think is worth knowing about. So here, we'll see here that I have this prod instance because I've already connected to the prod instance before. So let's remove that. SSH prod, and let's give it the verification code 286 482. And now, this is probably the thing that you have seen before. It's going to, to ask me, are you, are you willing to accept that this, key, that this key that is being presented by the prod environment is secure? Well, in this scenario, I feel secure in that I can trust this, but remember, like, uh, I would never do this for the bastion because if there is someone who is listening in who, who presents a false certificate or something to me while I'm connecting to the bastion instance, that would be really bad because then I'm not actually secure. But here I can trust that the prod instance has the... Uh, I can trust that because the bastion instance has already validated me towards the internal system and I know nobody can reach inside of the internal system without going through the bastion. So here I can simply accept it. So now I could do something like this. I could try to SSH into root at test, I think. Uh, testing, is the testing? Yeah, exactly. So now I'm trying to access the testing inbox from the product, the prod environment. And as you can see, it actually isn't going to, it's not going to allow me to connect because of the IP tables that I set up. So I've set up firewalls rules that states that you are not allowed to connect to that environment through uh, otherwise unless you're in the bastion instance. But if I go and I exit out of the uh, production environment and I SSH into bastion, I can do the verification code again, 152391. And now I'm in the bastion, I can SSH into testing or do guest at testing and now it's going to ask me to validate this and I say yes I trust it and I need to give the password and now I'm in the testing environment so I hope that's clear to you the bastion instance is the entry point to the rest of the network and as long as I'm validated towards the bastion I don't actually have to uh, I, I can trust the internal environments that's at least the idea and this is true as long as the internal environments only allow connections from the bastion so what i want you to take away from this and rather or rather what i learned from this was that first and foremost ssh certificates are pretty powerful because i can basically create a workflow where i can sign temporary certificates and give people access and then revoke that access really really quickly or at least set it as a time-based thing which is pretty pretty powerful then it's also pretty cool that we can use something like pam as I was saying, I was going to walk you through that. So I can actually extend my PAM configuration. And PAM is just pluggable authentication module, which is something that comes with the Linux, uh, Linux operating system, where basically what you can think of PAM as is a 
extensible validation system. So if you pre if you create a program such as SSH or SSH, like the Open SSHD server that supports PAM, that allows me as the consumer of that product to specify what type of validation I want to happen. So if we look at my um, SSH, let's take a look at my. Did I specify that somewhere? I'm not sure anymore because I'm pretty sure that I set all of this up at, yeah, here it is. So this is my PAM file or like the SSHD configuration for PAM. And all I had to do in order to set all of this up is to add this rule down here. I'm not going to go into like exactly how PAM works because I can't give you every nitty gritty detail of this. But basically all I did is that I added this line for my, my Google Authenticator la uh, library. And now I have support in my SSHD um, configuration to make this a keyboard interactive experience and actually use uh, two-factor uh, two, uh, uh, two authentication in my login flow, which I think is pretty cool. That's what's so ho cool about PAM, that it allows me to actually, as new validation systems comes, comes into play, as long as there's a library for it and my application supports it, I can just sh choose what type of validation strategy I want. So that's an, something that I also learned. And finally, I just wanted to say that using this, uh, like this idea of a safe proxy is a pretty cool way to secure an environment where you want to make sure that you have good, strong, solid security, but at the same time, you don't want to manage a lot of complexity on each of these machines. Have a great day.